this faith which professes the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity and defend us from all adversaries. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and I'd like to invite our baptism family forward. On this Trinity Sunday, it is fitting that we gather in the name of the one who places his name on us and will place his name also on little Elizabeth today. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And Peter writes in his first letter, baptism now saves you. And so we have these great promises from God of the salvation that he brings through water combined with his word that washes away sin and gives new life. And so, Elizabeth, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Jesus Christ, the crucified. As a body of Christ, she will be baptized into our unity and community and uh, into our family of faith, but also into your family. But you guys know that you can't do this alone. It takes uh, the body of Christ working together to raise children in the faith. And so you also are given opportunity to be part of her spiritual life and upbringing. So all of you up here, I ask, um, as you are entrusted by God to place into her hands the Holy Scriptures, to teach her those basic truths of faith, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, remind her of these, this baptismal day and the promises that God has made to her, and also prepare her to receive the sacrament of the altar as she gets older. If it is your intention to serve her this way, then say yes with the help of God. Yes. yes. And may God bless you with all that you need to continue to build her up in this one true faith. And so we as a body of Christ get to gather and pray over her the prayer that Jesus has given his church to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we, uh, as a body of Christ, in welcoming Elizabeth into this truth, make our baptismal confession of faith. We confess together the faith which God works through baptism. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? I pray that you renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And so, how is she named? Elizabeth Faith Bloom. All right, get her right over here. Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth Faith Woon, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God the Father who created you, God the Son, who redeems you by his blood, and the Holy Spirit who has filled you with new life, keep you in this faith to life everlasting. Amen. If you need that anymore, um, we are going to light our baptis baptismal candle for you. And this is the moment where I realized I didn't look at it beforehand, as it comes in this nice, fancy plastic wrapper. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, it's it's new, it's fresh. So uh, we're going to set this crinkly right here, and then. Light this baptismal candle off of our Paschal candle, the one that we light during the season of Easter, and the candle that reminds us of the resurrection life that we have in Christ, which is now also Elizabeth's resurrection life. So we pray that as we use this as a reminder of her baptism and uh, also a uh, rejoicing in the uh, new life and the, the light of Christ that burns in her you would also rejoice in this great work of Christ. Let's join together as a, a family of faith in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, and today you've given Elizabeth the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. And so we pray that as she has now become your child, you'd keep her in her baptismal grace, and according to your good pleasure, may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance that you have for her in your new creation. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Elizabeth, in holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of his kingdom in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. And we receive you in Jesus' name as a sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so we join together and say, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ to work and grow with us in his kingdom. May God be with you. Amen. So please join me in welcoming our newest member of our family of faith, Elizabeth Faith Woon. God be with you guys, and you can return to your seats, and we'll sing our hymn. continue with our Old Testament lesson and uh, not just being the father of the newly baptized but also our elder today and reader Michael Woon will share that word with us. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we hear the words of Jesus. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness of what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, number 953. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Trinity Sunday, the day we honor our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one being, unity and diversity and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. On this Trinity Sunday, I'm not going to try and explain the Trinity to you. A little later, we will confess our faith according to the Athanasian Creed, which is a creed that attempts to describe or explain the Trinity. And I'm not sure it does that good of a job anyway. Very confusing. Just wait until we go through it. I don't think the Trinity can be explained. I really don't. We know it's there. We know that this is our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but to, to explain that? In fact, as I read through the scriptures, there is no place where even God in his word attempts to explain the Trinity. Instead, what he does is he talks about what the Trinity does. The Trinity at work. That's what we find in the scriptures. So that's what I would like to take a look at under our scripture lessons for today. And we know, oh, we've got God the Father as creator and God the Son as Savior and uh, God the Holy Spirit as sanctifier. You know, and, and we like to divide them up that way. God did all of the creating, right? And, the whole, and Jesus did the saving, and the Holy Spirit is the one who sanctifies us and makes us holy before God. But not really. As you read the scriptures and the lessons... All three members of the Trinity are all involved in all of these things. There is a unity there, a unity of work, a unity of creativeness together. Look at Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the earth. And 
the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. God, Father and Son, or Father and Holy Spirit. We are told in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of the world. Jesus Christ. If he wasn't there, there would not have been any creation. Colossians talks about this, or Paul does in Colossians. He says, talking about Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or, power or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. We talk about God the Father preserving creation, and all creation is held together through Jesus Christ. God the Father didn't do the creating. Our holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all together did the creating of the universe in which we live. What about salvation? Was it just Jesus? Look again at our, our second lesson, the epistle from Acts 2. It says, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. It was God the Father's plan. It was his knowledge that put together the whole plan of salvation. Think, how often did Jesus say, I must be what? About my Father's business. I must be doing my Father's will. It was all about what God the Father had planned. And yet we are told through Jesus that it takes the Holy Spirit for us to have that salvation. God the Father's plan could be all worked out. Jesus could suffer, die, and rise again for the sins of the whole world. But if the Holy Spirit did not enter into people and bring them to faith, it would all be for nothing. Salvation for you and I takes the work of all three persons of the Trinity, all united and working together planning and sacrificing and creating faith. Our salvation is not the work of one person of the Trinity. Our salvation is the work of the entire Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all united together, working together, striving for the salvation of humanity for you and me. What are we told about baptism? Who are we baptized into? Who is Elizabeth baptized into today? Huh? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are told that the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us in baptism. But there are places that we are baptized into Jesus Christ. And he dwells in us. And where Jesus is what? There is the Father. Us in him and he in us. One of the great miracles of baptism is the fact that it is not just one person of the Trinity that dwells in us. It's the entire Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that lives in us. Creator. Redeemer, sanctifier, our triune God working together. But so often we put that whole thing in the past. God created. Jesus redeemed. The Holy Spirit sanctified us. I'll never forget one day I was talking with an individual and trying to share the love of God in Christ Jesus with him and how God cared 
and so on. And, and he looked at me and he says, yeah, I understand maybe God created and I understand maybe Jesus died back 2,000 years ago. But what has God done for me lately? What is the work of the Trinity just the work of the past? Or is the work of the Trinity the work of right now? We have a Savior who is exalted at the right hand of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes, not believed, but believes in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. Is God, is our triune God active and working today? In our lives, does he continue to be a part of who we are and what happens to us? Absolutely. What did God do for, what has God done for me lately? Did you wake up this morning and take a deep breath of the air that the Lord has blessed us with? What has God done for you lately? Did you get up and have some breakfast? And I don't care what you ate. Guess what? God provided that. In one way or another, God brought the elements together so that you could eat and drink and be nourished for this day. Did you get up and put clothing on? All of the fibers and anything that that clothing is made of Guess what comes from God's creation? It is part of what he gives us day by day, right? What did God do for me today? Look at what I have. Do you go to work and use the mind that God has given you, the talents and the gifts that God gives you to earn a daily living, to support your family? What has God done for you today? Are you like me with your breakfast? Have five or six pills to take, the medication that keeps you healthy? Every ingredient that's in those pills, guess what? God provided. What has God done for you today? We need to open our eyes and to see the Trinity at work in our lives every single day, every single moment of every single day. And then there's those special things that God does, right? When I was a pastor in Kansas, we had a tornado come through our town one day. And it went, it, like most tornadoes out there, the place that it hit was our one and only mobile home park. I don't know what it is about mobile home parks, but they attract tornadoes. It's just all there seems to be about it. And this tornado came down and as, as a volunteer firefighter, and we went out to deal with the aftermath of that. There were five mobile homes in a row and that, that were hit by that tornado. And that tornado took the first two of those and turned them into toothpicks. Totally and completely obliterated them. The third one in the row, it picked it up, flipped it upside down, and set it right back down on its foundation, upside down. Strangest thing I've ever seen. The last two in that row of five, it turned them into toothpicks. Totally disintegrated. Now, out of those five mobile homes, only one had an 80-plus-year-old woman living in it. Guess which one? The third one. The one that it was flipped over. Now you tell me God is not involved in our lives. What did, she was totally uninjured. What has God done for us lately? 
How often does he take the circumstances in our life and move things so that we are safe and protected? Two summers ago, I had knee surgery. I had meniscus repair in my right knee. That next spring or late winter after the first of the year, I went in and had cataract surgery to have my cataracts removed. And at the cataract surgery, the nurses, she put the thing on, oh, you've got an irregular heartbeat. Oh, I didn't know that. Not that I know of. She said, go see your doctor. Just a few months earlier, I had that knee surgery and nobody mentioned anything about an irregular heartbeat. At that point, I evidently didn't have one. Or the doctors would have noticed it as I went into surgery. Just three, four, five months later, here I am with a heart, with an irregular heartbeat. And I've had four of my first cousin males all drop dead of heart attacks prior to that. What has God done for me lately? I'm not on the medications that I need to keep my heart going fine. That quickly after it developed. This is the work of our triune God. God preserving Jesus in control of all things. He, again, from our... Um, from our lessons, that he was exalted to the right hand of God. That he's ahead of the body, the, the, the church. He works all things for the good of his people. That's talking about Jesus, too. The Holy Spirit at work in us. And then I was at a pastor's conference, at an interim conference this last week. We were looking at 1 Peter 1, and what does it say there? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. Paul saw his entire ministry as the work of the whole triune God. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, being guarded through faith for a salvation. In this you rejoice, though for now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor and revelation of Jesus Christ. And I realize that even the trials and the problems and the struggles that I go through, the Holy Trinity is there, involved, God working to strengthen my faith so that I receive that salvation. God working in everything for our good. I'm considering a call. What does the Lord want for me next? If I accept the call, will God bless me in that ministry? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I decline the call and stay here, will God bless me in ministry? Absolutely. You're going through a call process too. And you may be very frustrated that two or three pastors have all declined the call. Guess what? Is God still at work in the midst of your call? Absolutely. Will God bring the true pastor that he wants here? Sure. Sure. If I take this call and leave, does that put St. Paul's in a position where nothing, nothing can happen? Absolutely not. You see, this is the work of our Trinity, of our triune God. This is how you and I live under this great God. And for me, that's what I celebrate on Trinity Sunday. 
that we have such a wondrous and glorious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who from the beginning of creation to this very day works. And that little one that we baptize today, guess what? It's going to continue right on, isn't it? And for you and me, it's going to continue right on until the Lord comes again. Here's our hope. Here's our strength. Here's our peace. We have a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is at work to keep, bless, and care for us always. Praise God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds. Now here I usually say in Jesus Christ, but in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for this day and always. Amen. We rise and join together in singing our response to our great God. While we cannot explain Trinity, we confess what we know to be true about how God reveals himself to us and is at work uh, for our salvation, how God is working everything for our good. And so we confess together. Whoever desires to be saved must above all hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep and hold and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father, Father uncreated, uncreated, the Son uncreated, uncreated the Holy Spirit uncreated. uncreated. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternal, but one eternal. Just as we are not two good created, or three incomprehensible, but one uncreated and one incomprehensible. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. So that in all things, as has been stated, the Trinity in unity and the unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. 
He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in the age. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and as seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. Amen. Please be seated as we worship with our offerings so that God's word may be proclaimed in this place and out into this world. I also ask you to grab one of the black folders that are on the center aisle here. Let us know that you're here today and uh, mark any way that we can continue to care for you as we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, care for one another. and grace that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have known. Bless the teaching of your word in our high schools, especially we remember Lutheran High School in Westland. Guard and protect our students from harm and danger in both body and soul. Stimulate among our people the desire and will to continue the ministry of education through their prayers and personal support. Keep us this day in your gracious care, securely trusting in your everlasting goodness and love for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord of hosts, through your word, you give us an ever-growing understanding of the depth of your riches, wisdom, and knowledge that we may glorify you forever. 
And you delivered up your Son according to your definite plan and knowledge to be our Savior. So make our hearts glad today in this great faith. That with our mouths we may confess and with our lives we may live in all that you have done for us. That we may dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for Matthew, our synod president. David, our district president. Brian, our circuit visitor. And the pastors that you have called to this place, who have heard your voice calling them to be your servants. We pray for Peter and Timothy preparing for pastoral ministry. Lord, we pray for our congregation as we continue to go through the pastoral call process. And we pray for Pastor Gary as he has received a call to serve at St. John in Napoleon, Ohio. Lord, we ask that you would help all of these serve you according to your gracious will, going where you send and staying where you desire them to stay, that they, filled with your spirit, can always say, here I am, send me to wherever you ask. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for many that we know who are in need of your life, and healing and strength. We pray for Tyler and Jim, who will each have back surgery this week. Be with the surgeons that attend to them. Keep them safe, and may their recovery be swift. And we lift up Jan also as she prepares and waits for an upcoming surgery. We pray for those that we know with cancer, Greg, Leo, Beth, Harry, Dale, and Wanda, Eric, Virginia, Ken, and Stephen, Patty, Deborah, Tyler, Nancy, Jeremy, and Tom. Lord, work through the treatments that they receive. Strengthen their bodies. Give them health and healing according to your gracious will. And we also entrust to your will the healing of Rosemary and Robert, Marilyn, Barb, Connor, and Ron, Jeremiah, Carol, and Rebecca. Lord, we ask that you would Fill them with patience as they wait on you to strengthen their bodies so that they can return to all the things that you call them to as your servants. Lord, we know that our hearts, trusting in you, cannot be shaken. So we pray for all of these as well, that you would gladden their hearts, cause their tongues to rejoice, and make their flesh dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, and we also rejoice today in the new life that you have given to Elizabeth and that you also will give to Garrett at the next service. Lord, we thank you for filling us with your spirit that we as your people continue to dwell in strength and hope knowing that life eternal is ours today as a present possession and a hope and a promise to come. May they and we dwell secure in your promise and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and most holy Lord, God of our fathers, you are mystery beyond all knowing, and your majesty is beyond all telling. And in your great love for us, you have spoken peace and promise through the prophets. In your great mercy, you've sent your own Son as the incarnate word to impart forgiveness life and salvation through his death and resurrection for the sake of the whole world. Help us to receive him by faith and to glory in all that he has accomplished by his one all-sufficient death upon the cross. And as we prepare to eat this bread and drink this cup according to his own bidding, grant us your spirit that we may receive with faith the true body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With thanks and praise, let us now receive the meal prepared for us as a foretaste of the feast to come.
In the confession of the only true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, we join our vo voices with the angels and archangels and with all those who have gone before, singing praises to laud and magnify his glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we head out today, uh, we rejoice with our new uh, member of our family of faith, Elizabeth, and we praise God for that great gift today. Next week, we will be welcoming um, more new members to our family of faith here at St. Paul. Uh, we'll have another set of baptisms uh, next Sunday, and so we rejoice in that as we welcome in uh, a group of members from our Pathway class. And then following that service, as we will on the, the first Sunday of the next three months, we will uh, have a time of intentional fellowship after the service out on the lawn out here on, on the um, west side of the sanctuary. We'll take the coffee and donuts outside. We'll have uh, some tables and some, uh, a couple lawn games set up um, just to give us time to hang out with one another and rejoice in the work that God does among us. And, uh, just celebrate that unity that we have in Christ. And so I invite you to uh, plan to stay for just a little bit longer after the service next week for that. Um, we'll do the same after our 1015 service out at the school uh, also next week. Um, and I pray that God continues to uh, go with you as he has placed his name on you as a child of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We sing in his name as we sing our final hymn.